The Sherpa 100 AC by Goal Zero is laser focused on getting this battery into the hands of people that are going to use it to its maximum potential. But is it right for you? This is a battery that's jam packed with advanced features that still comes in under the legal flying limit. Does that stifle what the Sherpa is capable of? Or does it unlock new possibilities? Is it too much battery or too little? I'm Tyler with MakeUseOf.com and you're about to find out. Inside the box you get the battery along with a USB-C to USB-C cable. This is what will be used to charge the battery and also charge any compatible devices, given its reversible bi-directional nature. You could also purchase a 65 watt USB-C charger, which offers fast charging capabilities to charge the Sherpa in two hours. It also offers an additional USB-A port for multifunctional charging. You could also purchase the Nomad 50 solar panel, which can recharge the Sherpa in three hours in optimal sunlight. I'm really impressed with the design of the battery. It's a lot smaller and lighter than I expected. It comes in at around seven and a half by five and a half by one inches, and it weighs only 2.1 pounds. It feels really high quality. It's built out of aluminum with these solid rubber grips that keep it really solid on whatever surface you decide to keep it on. On the bottom of the device, you'll see some information along with a QR code to the user manual, which is super convenient. On the front of the device, we have a small display, which can be triggered with a display button located to the left of the screen. The display has some vital information when it comes to operating the battery. On the left, it relays the amount of wattage you're getting on the input while you're charging. And on the right, it relays the amount of wattage that you're giving to your devices sourced from the battery. In the middle of the display, we have a battery life remaining on the Sherpa, along with the hours to empty, which is super convenient if you're not into doing a bunch of math. You also have three additional buttons that enable and disable the different outputs on the Sherpa, those being USB, AC, and wireless charging. At the front of the battery, we have an array of both inputs and outputs. Moving from the left to the right, we have two USB-C ports. The top USB-C port is both an input and an output at 60 watts max. The lower USB-C is also an input output with 60 watt input and up to 100 watt output. To the right of the USB-C ports are two USB-A port outputs, each at 12 watts max. On the right side of the display is a full-sized, in this case, American AC inverter output, rated at 110 volts and 100 watts max. As mentioned before, there's also a wireless charger conveniently located at the top of the device, making it super simple to drop your phone or earbuds on them and let them charge while resting there at up to 15 watts, which is really impressive. On the back side of the battery, you'll find a small fan which can kick on from time to time, Next to the fan is an 8mm solar charging input, rated at 22 volts and 60 watts max. Over to the left, there are also two manual switches dedicated to the input and output control of the USB-C ports. Due to the fact that power can be delivered in both directions on the USB-C ports, this switch gives you the option to manually choose which one you want to use. So let's say in a pinch you want to use your cell phone battery to charge up the Sherpa, you can just do that with the flip of the switch. But I've had good luck just leaving it on auto. Comparing the Sherpa 100AC to the previous model, we have some notable performance boosts. These include a 10 watt boost to the wireless charger and the addition of a 100 watt USB-C output. It also has an improved sleeker design with less crowded ports in the front. This does however come at a sacrifice to the extra included cables that came with the previous model and the hidden compartments built in to hide those. But overall, I'm really happy with the new design of the Sherpa. Setting up and using the Sherpa 100AC couldn't be any easier. It comes out of the box with a decent charge, but it's recommended that you charge up the Sherpa fully before use. After that, it's as simple as taking it on the go and plugging in your favorite items and enabling the outputs. The Sherpa packs a 94.7 watt hour lithium ion battery with a single cell equivalent capacity of 25,600 milliamp hours. It features low battery protection and simultaneous discharge and recharge. I love this feature because when I take it on the go, I can just have this plugged into the wall and all my other devices plugged in and have everything charging. You just have to make sure that the input is greater than the output, otherwise you're still going to drain the internal battery. Goal Zero site touts that the battery can recharge a smartphone up to eight times, a tablet up to three times, and a laptop up to two times. Obviously, these figures will vary based on the capacity of your devices, but for reference, here's a real world example that I had with my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. My laptop model packs a 100 watt hour battery, which is only slightly higher than what the Sherpa packs at 95 watt hours. 
when my laptop battery was at 10%, I broke out the fully charged Sherpa 100. I plugged my MagSafe adapter directly into the 100 watt USB-C port on the Sherpa. I also could have taken my entire power brick and plugged it into the AC output on the Sherpa, but since each outputs 100 watts max, I opted for the smaller, cleaner setup. At this point, my Sherpa claimed one hour until it was empty, and my laptop claimed it would be two hours and 24 minutes until charge. About 45 minutes goes by and I get this temperature indicator on the Sherpa, but the fan is yet to kick on. Meanwhile, my laptop is up to about 65% charge. The fan eventually kicked on a few moments later, then shortly after, the battery died leaving the laptop at 73% charge with minor usage throughout charging. The Sherpa definitely did a great job at giving my battery that extra boost. I'm confident that if I was traveling anywhere with a full laptop battery and a full Sherpa, I'm confident I can get a 12 hour day of heavy usage done. But if you're looking to have a battery that could recharge your most power hungry devices multiple times, then you may want to look elsewhere. This battery falls in an interesting spot in the market. It's designed to be the biggest battery you could take on an airplane, so the intent is definitely to have the Sherpa be your number one travel companion. It's not one of those big batteries that you take off grid to power all your appliances and recharge your devices multiple days over and over again. But it's also not a small battery that you can just slip in your pocket or in a backpack compartment for those just in case recharge scenarios. If you're lugging a portable battery around with you that's this size and this weight, then you're definitely gonna wanna use it for a specific scenario. So what might that specific scenario be? Well, for me, I think it's in the name. It's this AC port. This is something that smaller, lightweight batteries just don't have. As mentioned before, this output maxes out at 100 watts, so you're not just gonna be able to plug anything into it and have it work. Big appliances that suck power for difficult tasks aren't gonna be compatible with this battery. For that, you're gonna need to look for something bigger. But for less intense, more sustained power draws, this battery can power a lot of household devices that you would normally have to plug into a wall, and it can do so for multiple hours. I could see this battery being really great for hanging string lights in an outdoor space where you might not have access to power. Same goes for a small outdoor TV or running a tower fan for a couple hours on a hot day. It could even power my big video softbox for some time. To me, this seems like the best case for the Sherpa 100 AC. Sustainable tasks outdoors where an outlet just isn't accessible. But I would like to mention that the operating temperatures for this device is between 32 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So you are gonna have to be mindful about what sort of outdoor situations you're gonna be putting this battery in. So is the Sherpa 100 AC battery pack the right pack for you? As I said before, this battery pack falls in an interesting place in the market for a very specific group of people. If you need to power some more demanding appliances like power tools, refrigerators, and electric stove tops, this is not gonna be the battery for you. But if the AC output isn't necessary for you and you're just looking for a portable battery that can charge your laptop, your phone, and some earbuds while you're traveling, I'd highly recommend getting a smaller, much portable battery bank. Something like the Anchor PowerCore Plus holds about the same amount of capacity, yet is much, much smaller and lighter and only takes up slightly bigger footprint than a smartphone. You will lose that AC output, that wireless charger, and the solar input, but to me those are good sacrifices to make when saving money and weight and space in my travel bag. If you find that having an AC outlet on the go is necessary and you definitely need to be able to bring it on an airplane, or you could definitely find benefit in having a solar input, then I think the Sherpa 100 AC is the ideal solution for that lifestyle. For all the advanced features that this thing packs, it's hard to beat the small portable nature of this device, especially for air travel. 